In this video, I'm going to use the Schrodinger equation to give us some useful expressions that link together the time derivative of the wave function to some other useful quantities. We're actually going to be using the expressions that I derive in this video in later videos. This video is part of a playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find the link to this playlist in the description below. So let's start off with the Schrodinger equation, and then we can actually manipulate the Schrodinger equation, and that's going to give us the expressions that I want to derive. So first of all, we'll write down the 1D Schrodinger equation. Uh, it's going to be IH bar times this guy. Now this is what we want to be solving for, the psi dt. And this guy is going to be equal to uh, minus h bar squared over 2m. And then we're going to have the rest of this kinetic energy term. And we're going to add to that the potential term. That's the potential energy function. So uh, if we want to isolate this partial derivative with respect to time of the wave function, what we have to do is divide both sides by i h bar. And dividing by i h bar, is a, there's a slight little nuance that we have to consider. Because if you take i, i is the square root of minus 1. And if you divide by i, that's the same as multiplying by minus i. So dividing by i is the same as multiplying by minus i. That has links to how i is actually a 90 degree rotation in the complex plane. So minus i is just a 90 degree rotation in the opposite direction. So we're going to use this little fact when we divide by i h bar. Dividing by h bar is simple. h bar is just a real valued constant. So if we divide both of these terms by h bar, I'll write this out, we've got d psi dt. That's what we're trying to find. d psi dt is equal to, now let's divide this term by i h bar. First of all, we have an h bar squared, so one of those h bars is going to cancel. Then we're dividing by i, which is the same as multiplying by minus i. So if we multiply by minus i, this minus sign is going to disappear, and we'll just have a positive i. And that's going to give us i h bar over 2m. And again, we're going to have this uh, partial derivative term over here. And I'll just write that in. Then, what's going to happen to this term over here? Well, we, we're dividing by h bar, and we're also dividing by i, which is the same as multiplying by minus i. So we're going to have a minus sign. That's going to give us an i v psi. But we have to keep in mind that we're dividing by h bar as well. So you can think of this as multiplying this entire equation. So imagine this entire equation. We've multiplied it by a factor of 1 over i h bar. And this factor of 1 over i h bar, that's actually the same as minus i on h bar. So one of these h bars cancels the h bar squared over here. And there's nothing to cancel in this term, so it just comes down in the bottom. And that explains the minus sign over here and the plus sign over here. The reason we don't have a minus sign over here is because this minus sign combined with the minus sign we introduced to give a plus sign. So this is actually what we're going to be using in later derivations, in later videos in this playlist. But we also need another expression, another expression that is the complex conjugate of this equation. So what, what I want to do is I want to take the complex conjugate of all of these terms and write another expression that we're also going to use. So what happens if we take the complex conjugate of the left-hand side? Well, the complex conjugate of the left-hand side is just going to be psi star differentiated with respect to time. So that's the left-hand side of the equation. The right-hand side of the equation is a little more complicated. We're going to have to have psi star everywhere where we see psi, and we're also going to have to do stuff to these i's. Now, when you complex conjugate, uh, you have to turn i into minus i. Or if you have a minus i, you turn it into a plus i. That's what taking the complex conjugate means. You're, you're changing the sign of the imaginary component. So this is the left-hand side. Let's do the right-hand side of the equation. What we have to do is we have to change that i to a minus i. That's going to give us minus i h bar over 2m. And we have to make sure that this guy is a complex conjugated version of the wave function. That's going to be the second partial derivative. Oh, not a square. I want a star over here. That's the complex conjugate, dx squared. 
And finally, this minus sign, because it's associated with an I, has to change to a plus sign. So we're going to have plus I V psi over H bar. So we've actually conjugated everything, and we just need to put a star over here. So everywhere where we see a psi, we see a psi star in the complex conjugated version. Right? There's three places where psi appears. There's three places where psi star appears. Everywhere where we see an I, we've actually turned that to a minus I. So we've got a minus I and an I, and they've actually uh, swapped signs. So this is also an expression that we're going to be using in the later derivations. So this video is kind of a reference video uh, as to where these expressions came from. I'm just going to be writing down these expressions in later derivations, and you can look back at this video, and you can actually see where they came from. So to watch the other videos in this playlist, make sure you click over here.